Linnea, are you ready to ride bikes today? <laughs> <laughs> So this morning, I figured we'd talk just for a few minutes about stance. We've been kind of getting into body position, that sort of thing. And so the thing I wanted to address is a question I get a lot is, when do we try to get low on the bicycle? Like, when is it that we should keep our center of mass low? I often talk about keeping center of mass low, like when we're jumping, in terms of just thinking about being grounded in our feet. But what we're going to actually talk about today is the actual position of our upper body and our, and our legs relative to the bicycle in three certain circumstances. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about moving into descents, being on a steep descent, and being in an off-camber turn. So let's take a look at all three. All right. I don't know if this is going to really be possible, but we're going to try this. Linnea, are you ready to ride bikes today? Um, I might need more protective gear for this. You might. This is a good. This is a good. This, this is a good spot to warm up. You think you can get on your bike here? Sure. Let's give it a try. So take the elevator to the top. <laughs> No way, this it's a perfect like place to start. Almost vertical. Do I have the brakes? Do you I, have the I brakes? I got brakes and you got brakes and you can step on the pedals too. See if it works. Don't be scared. <laughs> Very scared. <laughs> okay. So now you can just step on your right foot on that pedal, I think. We'll see what happens. I want to relate this to some experience in my life, but I, I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to fall on my face. <laughs> you might. All right. You like your riding position there? Almost. Okay, so where would you be on your bike? Can you find can you find a position here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really far back. You're really far back, right? So look at can you look up? So right here you'd be really low, right? Yes. I mean I don't know if this is a position you'll actually I mean, be in when you're riding your I'm, bike. Even if I straighten my legs, I'm really low. You're really low, yeah. So this is a good example here because your bike has moved forward in front of you. You're you know, your hips are trying to maintain their stance over the bottom bracket, but the bottom bracket's super far back compared to the bicycle, right? So you're, you end up looking very, very low, but really even with a tall stance in your legs, you're ending up low, but you're not trying to be low here, right? Yeah. Can you bend your knees here a little bit? Um, a little bit, not very much, right? Because yeah, you actually need the clearance. I have almost no room here. Yeah, so you, you need the clearance there. So it's just kind of interesting how we can look low in certain circumstances, but you're not necessarily trying to be low, right? right. So now let's actually, practice riding down this because I think it's going to be a lot easier than doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever actually ridden down this. Ooh, that is it actually looks worse from the top. One of the other places that we get tend to get to move forward is when we're moving into a section, right? So you're moving into the, through this attack position at the top of the section. So not only are we are we like looking relatively low, kind of relative to the bike as we go down something steep, again because the bottom bracket has changed in location to the rider, you know, on the bicycle. So the bottom bracket is now kind of behind the saddle, which has us kind of outstretched and has us kind of low. But we're also getting this as we move into the section, right? So as we move in. We're kind of starting in a tall position here and we're moving through our attack position. So momentarily on the top here, we're low. And then as soon as we drop in, we're low for a different reason because of now our arms are, have moved forward. And this is putting us in a position where we're low again relative to the bike. So we actually get two low moments. I like that. Coming down here, moving in and then also as we're moving through. If you're enjoying these lessons, we have a full online school at fluidrideonline.com. All right, we've got a new off-camber turn for you today. So we're going to give this a try here coming through. So standing on definitely a little bit of a bank here. And the idea here is on off-camber is that we need to drive our traction points in hill, right? So we're going to be swinging that right hip out slightly. So for you being left foot forward, this will be your back foot turn. That outside hip will be swinging out as you come through and down here into a position kind of like this. And this is the reason that we get low here is because we're driving this outside knee forward and there's actually some twisting. And so that rotation is going to basically mean that my body is lowering. It's going to make me look 
quite low going through mm -hmm. an off-camber turn. And this is kind of cool because on an off-camber turn, we're really trying to get the tires to dig into the ground. And so we want a low center of mass. But again, we're not really thinking about get low and twist. We're thinking about driving forward, creating some rotation, and all those things are conspiring to help us get low. Mm -hmm. So what we find in all these situations is the movement that we have to make is the, actually the thing that's getting us low, giving us a low center of mass and really helping us through all three of these um, situations, mm -hmm. right? So we're not trying to get low. I no. feel like there should be such a good soundtrack right now. <laughs> we're not trying to get low, but it's a byproduct of correct body position and driving your knees forward and yep. the twisting. Exactly. So, so don't, don't even worry about it when you come through, just make a good off-camber turn uh -huh. and uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. All right. Nice. This is a sweet turn. Yeah, I almost felt a little bit of drift. You got a lot of drift. Look at this. First oh, thing in the morning. Beautiful p and loam. It is. Great dirt right now. It's beauty. Let's do another lap through. Okay. Yeah, that was <laughs> wicked. That was sweet. I went for a little extra drift. Wow, look at those. Yeah. Like I like to say, don't be thrifty, get drifty. <laughs> Love it. All right, so here we've got a, we're opening up the turn a little bit. So we had a, a cool turn there, it's working, but it's just a very quick moment. So here we wanna create a little situation where she's having to hold a little bit more in this off camber. So uh, we've set it up here so she can come in nice and fast and she's gonna be making an off camber turn up this hill. All right, so yeah, so here in this off camber turn, it's a pretty short turn. So there's just a moment where you're kind of driving forward. Obviously we've worked on off camber turns a lot in the past. So we have a lot of good examples there as well of kind of like in turns where you have to trap a little more where you're down and you're kind of holding the bike down through the turn a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But this is one of those situations again because of the hip rotation, looking in hill where I want to go, all these things conspire to bring the height of my head down and bring my body a little bit lower. Right. right? And we have the same thing on a steep descent, bikes out in front of us. So arms are extended, which makes us feel pretty low kind of over the back tire or over the seat or wherever we are in relation to the bicycle. We had our attack position moving through into a steep descent, moving through kind of with some speed to allow ourselves to create enough elbow bend to deal with the upcoming descent, right? So we're moving yeah. into this position here. And again, looks like we're pretty low, but the really important takeaway here is that we're not coming towards something and thinking, okay, I need to get low and then rotate because those two things don't actually work so well together. It's mm -hmm. the rotating and getting that gets us low. We don't want to think about trying to get low and then trying to rotate. It's just not going to work. For a steep descent, we don't, we're not thinking about just coming into the steep descent low. We're coming in tall. We're moving through our attack position, letting the bike roll into the steep descent. And then now we're in this position where we're staying balanced over the bottom bracket. So again, we're not thinking get low. We're just ending up there. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All kind of makes sense. Yeah. Well, and what's cool about all of this technique is that it feels so light and effortless when you do it correctly because you're not muscling it around. You're not squatting. Mm -hmm. You're not hinging. You're not pulling or pushing. Exactly. These are all just moments in time and we're, we're staying in this dynamic state and we're starting in our strongest position here, just in a standing posture. Right? Mm -hmm. and we're always returning to the standing posture, but we're not trying to make a shape and hold it. We're just moving through these various spaces <laughs> momentarily. Well, nice Thanks job. so much. You're welcome.